Your hands and feet are trying to tell you something. They're cold when they shouldn't be. They go numb out of nowhere. Maybe they tingle when you're just sitting on the couch. But here's the real question. Are you brushing off early warning signs of poor blood circulation? Ignoring these could lead to serious health issues down the road, and I don't want that for you. Today, I'm going to walk you through 10 simple at-home tests you can do right now, no fancy equipment, just your body and a few minutes. These tests could help you catch circulation problems early before they spiral into something bigger. So grab a notebook, pause if you need to, and let's dive in to make sure your body's blood flow is on point. Let me share a story that hit close to home. My uncle, a guy who's always been active, started noticing numbness in his toes a few years back. He thought it's just long hours at work, no big deal. He ignored it for months. Then he developed a foot ulcer that just wouldn't heal. After a trip to the doctor, he got a diagnosis, peripheral artery disease, a condition where narrowed arteries reduce blood flow to your limbs. It was a wake-up call. If he had paid attention to those early signs, he could have started treatment sooner and avoided complications. That's why I'm passionate about this topic. Poor circulation isn't just about cold hands or feet, it can increase your risk of heart attack, stroke, nerve damage, and even amputations in severe cases. And it's not just for older folks. People in their 30s and 40s are increasingly at risk because of sedentary lifestyles, stress, high blood sugar, or smoking. The good news? You can catch it early with simple tests like the ones I'm about to show you. Before we start, hit that like button if you're ready to take charge of your health and let's get into it. These 10 tests are designed to check how well blood is flowing to your extremities, your hands, feet, and legs. You don't need a medical degree or any special tools. All you need is a few minutes and a willingness to listen to your body. After each test, I'll explain what the results might mean and what to do if something feels off. At the end, I'll ask you to tally up how many tests raised a red flag for you, so stick with me. Ready? Let's start with test number one. First up, let's check your extremities. During the day, take a moment to feel your hands and toes. Are they noticeably colder than the rest of your body, even when you're in a warm room or it's nice outside? If your fingers or toes feel like they've been in the fridge, that could be a sign that blood isn't reaching your outer limbs as well as it should. Why does this happen? Your body prioritizes blood flow to vital organs like your heart and brain. If circulation is sluggish, your hands and feet are the first to feel the chill. Try this test a few times today, maybe after sitting for a while or when you wake up. If your extremities are consistently cold, make a note. This one's super easy and kind of fun. It's called the capillary refill test. Here's how it works. Press down firmly on your fingernail or toenail until it turns white. Release and count how many seconds it takes for the pink color to return. You can use a watch or just count 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi. Normally, the color should snap back in under 2 seconds. If it takes longer, say, 3 or 4 seconds, that could indicate slower blood flow or issues with your capillaries, the tiny blood vessels that deliver oxygen to your tissues. Try this on a few nails to compare. If you're getting slow results consistently, that's a signal to pay attention. For this test, you'll need to lie down somewhere comfortable. Prop both legs up at a 45-degree angle. You can use a wall or stack some pillows. Hold them there for two minutes. Set a timer so you don't have to guess. After two minutes, slowly lower your legs back down. Now, observe, do your legs turn reddish, deep pink, or even slightly purple? Here's what's going on. When your legs are elevated, blood flow shifts. If your blood vessels are struggling to adjust, you might see this color change when you lower them. It's a sign that your arteries or veins aren't responding as quickly as they should. If you notice this or if your legs feel heavy during the test, jot it down. This one's great because you can do it anywhere. Sit down and wiggle your toes as fast as you can for 20 seconds. Really go for it like you're trying to shake water off your feet. After 20 seconds, stop and check in. Do your toes feel numb, stiff, or painful? Maybe they're cramping up. Healthy toes should handle this without a problem. If you're feeling discomfort, it could point to poor circulation or even nerve issues, which often go hand in hand. Try this test on both feet, and if one side feels worse than the other, that's important to note. Per blood flow can affect one limb more than the other in some conditions. Let's check your pulse. You can do this on your wrist, behind your ankle, or on your neck. For the wrist, place two fingers below your thumb and press gently. For the ankle, feel just behind the inner ankle bone. For the neck, press lightly on one side of your windpipe. 
Count the beats for 15 seconds and multiply by 4 to get your beats per minute. What you're looking for is strength. Is the pulse strong and steady? If it's weak, hard to find, or feels like it's fading in and out, that could mean narrowed arteries or reduced blood flow. If you can't find a pulse at all, don't panic, it can be tricky. Try again later, and if it's consistently absent, that's a red flag. Take a good look at your lower legs and feet. Roll up your pants or take off your socks. Do you notice anything unusual? Is the skin pale, bluish, or even purplish? Does it look shiny, almost like it's stretched tight? Maybe it's flaky or dry, no matter how much lotion you use. These are signs that your skin isn't getting enough oxygen and nutrients, which happens when blood flow is low. Compare your legs to your arms or torso. If there's a stark difference, that's worth noting. Also, check for swelling, puffy ankles or feet can indicate poor circulation or vein issues. Think back to the last time you had a cut, scratch, or bruise, especially on your legs or feet. How long did it take to heal? A small cut should close up in a few days and fully heal in about a week or two. If you're noticing that minor injuries are lingering for weeks or if they get infected easily, that's a clue. Poor circulation slows down the delivery of immune cells and nutrients needed for healing. If you have a current scratch, keep an eye on it over the next few days. Slow healing is a subtle but serious sign of circulation trouble. This test is all about movement. Go for a walk at your normal pace for 5 to 7 minutes. Could be around your house, down the street, or even on a treadmill. Pay attention to your legs. Do they feel heavy, tired, or painful before you hit the 7-minute mark? Do you feel like you need to stop and rest? If you're experiencing these symptoms, it could be a sign of intermittent claudication, a fancy term for pain caused by reduced blood flow to your leg muscles during activity. Note how far you can walk before discomfort kicks in, and if it happens consistently, that's a big clue. Let's talk about your toenails and leg hair. Check your toenails. Are they growing slowly, or have they become thick, brittle, or yellowish? Now look at your lower legs. Is the hair patchy, thinning, or completely gone in some areas? Healthy nails and hair rely on good blood flow to deliver nutrients. If your toenails are struggling or your leg hair is disappearing, it could mean your circulation isn't keeping up. Compare your legs to how they looked a few years ago or ask a friend if they've noticed changes. These are small signs with big implications. For our final test, let's compare your feet. Use the back of your hand to feel the temperature of your left foot, then your right foot. Go back and forth a few times. Is one foot consistently colder than the other? Maybe it's just a little cooler or maybe it's noticeably chilly. A temperature difference between your feet could be an early warning of a blocked artery or uneven blood flow. This is especially important if you've noticed other symptoms on one side, like numbness or pain. Try this test a few times over the day to confirm. All right, let's pause for a second. How many of these tests felt off for you? Grab a piece of paper and tally up the ones where you noticed something unusual. Was it just one or two, or are you hitting four or five? Drop your number in the comments below. I read every single one, and I want to know how you're doing. If you had even two or three tests that seemed abnormal, it doesn't mean you're in big trouble, but it does mean your circulation deserves some love and attention. Don't panic, knowledge is power, and you're already taking the first step by doing these tests. Let's talk about why this matters. Poor blood flow isn't just about cold toes or tired legs. Over time, it can lead to serious health problems. Reduced circulation increases your risk of stroke, heart attack, and nerve damage. It can cause wounds that won't heal, leading to infections or, in rare cases, amputations. Conditions like peripheral artery disease or chronic venous insufficiency can creep up silently and catching them early makes all the difference. Here's something surprising. This isn't just an issue for older adults. Sedentary jobs, stress, smoking, high blood sugar, and even genetics can put people in their 30s and 40s at risk. I recently read a study that showed a rise in circulation-related issues among younger adults, especially those who sit for 8-plus hours a day. So whether you're 25 or 65, these tests are for you. So what should you do if a few of these tests raised a red flag? First, don't stress. There are simple, practical steps you can take starting today to boost your circulation. Here's my top advice. 1. Move more. Aim for a 20-30-minute walk every day. Even light movement gets your blood pumping. 
If you're stuck at a desk, set a timer to stand and stretch every hour. 2. Stay hydrated. Dehydration thickens your blood, making it harder to circulate. Drink at least 8 glasses of water a day more if you're active. 3. Stop smoking. Smoking narrows your blood vessels big time. If you smoke, look into resources to help you quit. It's one of the best things you can do for your circulation. 4. Control blood sugar and blood pressure. High blood sugar and hypertension damage your arteries over time. Get regular checkups and follow your doctor's advice. 5. Try compression socks. These are game changers if you're on your feet or sitting for long hours. They gently squeeze your legs to help blood flow back to your heart. 6. Simple at-home exercises. Try ankle pumps, point and flex your feet 10 times or calf raises while brushing your teeth. These small movements add up. If you had two or more concerning test results, it's time to talk to your doctor. They might recommend tests like an ankle brachial index, which compares blood pressure in your arms and legs, or a Doppler ultrasound to see how blood is flowing. These are non-invasive and can give you clarity. Your body is always talking to you and these tests are like a quick check-in to see what it's saying. Those little whispers, cold feet, slow healing cuts, tired legs can turn into screams if you ignore them. But by catching them early, you're giving yourself the chance to stay healthy and active for years to come. Before you go, drop a comment with your test tally and let me know one step you're going to take this week to improve your circulation. Maybe it's drinking more water or scheduling that doctor's visit. I'm cheering you on. Stay aware. Stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.